Mkotesa was appearing before the committee after the youth member of parliament for Western Uganda, Gerard Karuhanga, tabled documents implicating him in bribes from the oil exploration companies. If you want to prove the authenticity of these documents, go to that source. If you find that the, the source denies it, then you can talk about whether it is, whether it is authentic or not. Kutesa was also questioned about how his daughter and his son-in-law, who is alleged, are connected to some of the oil companies. We politicians, is there any law stopping any of our children or relatives doing business in Uganda? Relatives have been known to be favored for consistently doing some businesses. Is it a crime for any of your relatives, those who are in politics, to do business in this country? And if so, where will they go to do business? Kutesa was furious at what he claims was forged documents, and he denied the charges against him. Nonetheless, he went on to say that he would let justice take its course, and if found guilty, he would be ready to face the consequences. And the important thing I think this committee should do, to find out if anybody took bribes. Certainly I can assure you I didn't take any bribes. Meanwhile, the Internal Affairs Minister Hillary Onek did not proceed with the queries in the committee. Of course, the Minister of Internal Affairs, Honorable Hillary Onek, uh, had not uh, completed his written submission. As we started interfacing with him, he was uh, making a request that uh, we allow him because uh, he had not uh, exhausted his uh, written submission. Yesterday, some of the lead petitioners tabled new evidence implicating the three ministers accused of taking bribes from oil farms. They presented letters linking Minister Hillary Onek to a three million US dollar deal to contract an oil pipeline to connect Uganda, Kenya, and Democratic Republic of Congo to Lake Albert region. Maurice Chol, NTV at Parliament.